In today's video, I'm gonna be trying to survive 100 days in a nuclear winter. I have three objectives. First, craft full alacrity armor and a tidal great blade. Second, eliminate the mutated reeker, most known for leading the mutated army. Finally, defeat the ancient overlord. Can I survive in this nuclear winter? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> It's a gorgeous day outside today. Another day at the plant, eh? Sure is. I've got to go fix the electrical tower today on the northern end. I've got to go take a look at the cooling pipes. Apparently there's some sort of leak, so I'll talk to you later. See you soon. What was that? No, 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 no. Run! Oh, where am I? Wait, uh, I'm alive? Just like that, our day one has begun. We started by gathering some wood, killing some cows, and then mining some coal and cobblestone to make basic tools. I spent the next couple of days in search for forest. I ended up running into a village nearby. So as anyone would, with limited supplies, I went ahead and borrowed some of their crops. Everything seemed pretty normal about this village. We got this bed until we walked out and there was some weird structure in the middle. I had no idea what it did. When I turned the corner, I heard a noise and something was running at me. It looked to be some sort of spider slash villager. What is that? We managed to kill that easily until we went to the center and some mutated villager ran at us. It hit me once, it did seven and a half hearts. We decided to get the heck out of here. In the evening of day four, we found a location to start building our base. We used the outside of the base, built out of oak wood, and then in the evening, while I was getting rid of the grass, I saw someone in the distance. I went out to chase him. As soon as I walked past this tree to get him, I got jumped by mutated cows and pigs. Could this person have been responsible for setting off that nuke? We decided to take a couple days to relocate. We didn't want whoever that was to know where I lived, so we found this little cave and got busy. The reason reason why I wanted to build a fallout shelter under the ground is because if there is another nuke, I'd like to be prepared, okay? For the next few days, our objective was to get as much iron as we can, and we ended up finding quite a bit of iron. We then found a hole in the wall, and I walked through, and there was a skeleton here with an enchanted bow. And when he shot me for the third time, I went down to one and a half hearts. So we got the heck out of there. After nearly being executed, we gathered what iron we had. We made ourselves our chest plate, our leggings, and our helmet. We also made an iron sword, but we didn't have enough for any boots. And when I looked down into the ravine, I saw a black figure moving around. We had to go check it out, and when I arrived, it was massive. So we went ahead and started fighting it. Whatever this was, it hit me once, and then hit me again and I'm already at half HP. How the heck does it do so much damage? Anyways, with one more hit, we knocked it off the ledge, eliminating whatever that was. It seemed to be protecting this chest, and inside, I found alacrity boots and a depth strider book. After dropping the supplies off at our base on day 11, I went out exploring and I ended up finding some mysterious tower. I got closer and this tower had bad news written all over it. The block we mined was called an infected block. Since this tower seemed to be pretty dangerous, I decided to head right in. I made my way up the stairs and there was just an empty platform and going up the ladder, I found a chest. Within the chest, there was a primordial skull and some bones. After looting the chest, we went up the ladder and saw a primitive manducator. What the heck is that? After it hit me once, I I realized that it can't even hit me on the ladder, so that was pretty easy. I made my way up to the very top of the tower and saw a beckon. What the heck is this thing? I hit it once and it opened up. I I'm not exactly sure what this was, but uh, I ended up just killing it. It ended up dropping me some experience, and when I looked outside and looked back, it seemed to be the virus was spreading. I tried to remove it, but it just kept spawning, so we decided to get out of there. On day 12, I made my way back to the base, and I noticed my door was open. Why was my door open? And I looked, and there seemed to be a lot of infected blocks, so we had to go ahead and remove all of those. After removing the infected blocks from the outside, we noticed that it spread to the inside, so we had to get rid of that. I looked into the ravine and saw a floating sword. What the heck is going on? I decided to keep on exploring and attempts to finding forest since I had lost him at the very start and I ran into a barn. As I got closer, I realized this was no ordinary barn. This was an infected barn. As you can see, all of the animals in here have been infected by the virus. I made my way to the back and an animal jumped over and tried to kill me. I needed to put a stop to this virus and unfortunately for these pigs, I had to kill all of them. And not only did I have to kill all the pigs, I had to kill all of the cows and the llamas. It's too much of a risk. If any of these animals escape the farms, they could potentially affect the rest of the world and I can't let that happen. 
After collecting all this experience, I noticed there was a sign on the wall saying Dr. Swan's testing chamber. After a few days of traveling, I made it back home. For the next couple of days, I spread torches all around our base, mined a crap ton of dirt, and started building a farm. After I went ahead and finished the wheat farm and carrot farm, I went ahead and started building a animal farm. I found three pigs outside of the base and led two of them in, and then I went outside and gathered a couple of more. They had a baby, and I decided to name him Joe. Oof, that was a lot of work I just did on the base. I still had no sign of forest, so I kept exploring, and in the distance, I saw some sort of house. As I got closer, there was a sign that said Dr. Diver and Dr. Swan. Could this be their house? And who is Dr. Diver? I entered into the residence and looked in the left room. I didn't see anything. When I walked into the right room, I heard a noise. The door opened and it looked to be Dr. Swan. And as soon as I ran out of him, he pressed a button and got through the wall, but it wouldn't work for me. So I decided to mine through it and run out to try to find him. It seemed to be Dr. Swan was gone and he left a sign saying, you will die. By the looks of it, when Dr. Swan ran out, he broke a piece of redstone, which is why it didn't open. Anyways, we started ransacking his base, taking his glowstone and bookshelves. I spent the next four days traveling back to my base. When I arrived at my base, I noticed there was a bunch of infested blocks. Could Dr. Swan have infected my base? I walked in and noticed my entire farm was infected, even our baby friend Joe. Nothing personal here, Joe, but we do have to eliminate you. Can we get a hashtag rip Joe in the comments? I decided to look around for any clues to what would have happened here, and I found a sign stating you messed with the wrong dog. This was definitely from Dr. Swan. On that note, I packed my bags and left. I headed out thousands of blocks away to build my next base. I decided to build my version of a massive treehouse, essentially. As you guys can see, after a couple of days, I finished the base, and I used Dr. Swan's beds right here, and I made it a little chess room, an enchantment room, and even a brewing station. Now it was time to hit the caves. I ended up traveling around for a few days and found myself in a very mountainy area, and while I was running, I found this suspicious house. When I walked up to it, it said previous house of forest. So as you guys can see, it looks like I found forest house. Hopefully he's around here somewhere. A little while later, I found myself in a mine, and I ended up mining some diamonds, iron, redstone, gold, you name it, I mined it. Anyways, after all that mining, I decided to create myself a pickaxe, a sword, I made a helmet, and laggings. I didn't have enough for a chest plate, unfortunately. As soon as I returned from the mines on my way home, I found some watermelon, and then once I got home, I broke down these fences, and I created a farm. I ended up making a watermelon, carrot, and wheat farm. The brewing supplies from Dr. Swan's place really came in handy. I also enchanted all of my armor. I then continued my search for forest and saw this massive object. When I got closer, the entire thing was infected by these weird blocks. There was a button on the door and I opened it and something fell down. When I peeked over the edge, it was a massive Reeker boss. I jumped directly onto its head and as soon as it hits me, it poisons me. This thing is faster than me, meaning I am not able to outrun it. It gets me all the way down to three HP. I use both of my potions and next thing you know, I'm on one HP nearly dying. Remember, if we die, the entire world deletes. So I did what I thought was best. I ran into the water. As you guys can see, the Reeker boss is struggling to fight us in the water here and I jump on this lily pad and I'm able to take down the Reeker boss. After eliminating that Reeker boss, I was able to scout around this stack, and I ended up finding myself a chest, and within the chest, I found an alacrity helmet. After a very long trip back to my base, I looked up and saw that Dr. Swan was there. He immediately swan dove off and flew away. By the looks of it, Dr. Swan has gotten one of his recruits here and attempts to kill me. This thing does a lot of damage. I almost didn't realize I was about to die, so I had to splash down instant health. I then chased it all the way up, and it broke my chest plate. So I used this wood as cover, getting a final few hits, eliminating it. I spent the next eight days traveling around trying to find these beckon towers. Each one of these towers contains multiple beckons, which essentially spread the virus. So you know what I need to do. It's time to eliminate all of these. After eliminating the mutated mobs that spawned on me, I was able to eliminate the first beckon. I got closer to the tower and there was clearly another beckon here guarded by more mutated mobs. We had to eliminate each one of these. After eliminating the mutated mobs, I went ahead and defeated the final beck in here. I walked into the building and found a chest with alacrity legs. 
I knew that wouldn't be the only tower that I'd have to take down. And after a few more days of searching, it looks like I found two more. Once I got closer, I realized that this must have been the heart of where the virus was spreading. So we got to work. I immediately took down the first beckon and found this walking piece of meat. That is really creepy. I made my way for the next beckon and a wave of animals spawned. And I noticed behind me, there was a massive thing with two huge arms running at me. Oh no. So I turned around and started fighting it. And as soon as it hit me, it poisoned me. But I was able to two hit it so thankfully it didn't have too much health. After eliminating those mobs, I made my way to the final beckon, getting jumped by another sheep, but it was no match for me, eliminating it. I walked into the dark tower and looted the chest, and within, I found golden apples. It took me three days to get back to base. After enchanting some more items, I was looking for more signs of life and found another village which seemed to have been overrun. As soon as I realized it, this village was currently being overrun. This thing just killed a normal villager, so we needed to defend this village. I walked into the back of this village and found a villager hiding in the house and another one running away. Yep, it seems like there's still more mutated villagers. I ran to the back, noticing this is where they were coming from. It looks like they were being led by this massive one. So we went face to face. And as you guys can see, it knocked me up and does a lot of damage. I looked at my health and I'm already down to one and a half and we just eliminated him. And he ended up dropping us a tidal great blade. There was a couple mutated villagers left. So I tested the damage and it looks like this thing does quite a lot. It literally one shots them. I spent the next couple of days gathering food and farming a bunch of materials. That way I can build a fenced in area around this village to keep them safe. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. It took me two days of traveling to get back home. Once arriving back home, I started by brewing up a ton of potions. I enchanted my tidal great blade and I started working on creating an armory. After I finished brewing all of the potions, I went back to the armory I created and look at this. Now this looks pretty cool. After brewing and enchanting, I went out to look for Dr. Swan. And on day 92, while I was running up this hill, I found what looked to be Dr. Swan. By the looks of it, Dr. Swan is a full set of armor. It's gonna go down, but first we got to eliminate these mobs. And as you guys can see, as soon as I hit it, it went flying. This sword is actually OP. After eliminating that big warden boss, I ended up finding this beckon. And as soon as I hit it, it went flying. Dude, this sword not only does a lot of damage, but it actually has like a lot of knockback. Anyways, we took that down. By the looks of it, there's only a couple more beckons. And I literally one-shotted that one and something came flying out of the ground, but we managed to take it down before it did any damage. I walked up to what seemed to be the final beckon and took it down. And while I went to look for the front door, another one of these things flew up out of the ground. I charged in through the door, repotted my strength and speed potions and charged up the stairs. I started looking for Dr. Swan and he jumped down from the roof. As soon as he hit me, it seems like it explodes every time. What kind of freaking weapon is that? After another explosion hit, I had to throw down a health paw, otherwise I would have died. Ladies and gentlemen, I looked down at my health again and I was almost dead again. I had to pop another potion and eat more food to regen. After a few more exchanges, I go back in for the final hit, eliminating Dr. Swan. I looted the chest and found an alacrity chest plate. I started searching the rest of the premises and I found a sign stating ancient overlord coordinates. I spent the next three days traveling to those coordinates and there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the mansion of the ancient overlord. After drinking my potions, I charged right in and it has 250 health and just after a second of fighting him, I had to already use my health potion and I had to splash another one just to live. I went back in blocking my shield and as I hit him, he went flying. The knockback on this sword is insane. I walked up to him again, blocking my shield, blocking the hit, sending him flying. Now that I had the knowledge that block hitting sends him flying and he takes lots of fall damage, I had to keep doing it. And on that note, we blocked another couple of hits and we splashed a potion, eliminating the ancient overlord. And after a four day haul back to the nuclear wasteland, I ended up finding Forrest. Painful? Man, I'm glad to see you again. Likewise, I'm happy we both thought of coming back here now that the radiation has died down. Let's get the heck out of here. Make sure you check out Forrest's video in the description. We both had different objectives and fought different bosses. If you'd like to further support us, consider subscribing to our Patreon. There's lots of benefits and it would support us greatly. Take care, everyone.